All right, let's bring in our Wednesday MPs. We're always a weekly highlight, and here they are. <laughs> Conservative Finance Committee Chair James Rashad, Deputy NDP Leader Megan Leslie, and Liberal MP Roger Cousiner. Welcome to you all. All right, it's a party matter, but it's just too sexy to ignore the Dimitri Sudis, Eve Adams meltdown, if you will. All right, Megan, I got to put you on the spot on this I get to one. Start. What <laughs> should she keep her parliamentary secretary oh. job? And how do you think this should be handled? Oh my, I don't, I don't. <laughs> you don't know? I don't know. Why not? I, well, I'm just watching, I was just watching your interview, and uh, I did an interview this morning, and the interviewer asks me something about this situation, and there was new information, and I'm just listening to your interview with Bob Putt, <laughs> and there's new information. I, I almost don't know what's going on here. Uh, should she keep her parliamentary secretary job? Uh, I'm at a loss here. It's it's a bizarre little world that we're being exposed to, and we're seeing uh, allegations of threatening party members and trying like it's all about power, right? It's not about issues. It's not about talking about climate change or anything like that. It's about power and winning, and uh, that's what it's come to for the conservatives. I'm sure you have an opinion, Roger Kuzner. <laughs> I, I think we're one speed and ticket away from a, a Helena Rahim <laughs> blow up. I think so. Uh, let's uh, well sort of boil it down you know whatever went on with uh, with Dimitri Soudas he you know he used his position and that, that's unfortunate you know it's, it's love is blind but the political process is not and uh, so they'll uh, you know, the, the volunteer certainly I recognized this and knew he was uh, throwing his weight around and uh, so it, it blew up and that you know that stuff comes back and bites those guys but it speaks to Stephen Harper's ability to put people in positions that are willing to do whatever it is to get the job done, whether it's bend the rules and he gives them big jobs and big responsibilities. So whatever the sideshow is, the soap opera that is going around, on around Eve Adams, it comes back to the Prime Minister, I think. That was a good answer. That was way better than my slack jaw sitting here. <laughs> and I've dined off her I don't normally enough, agree with so you, but I'm going to agree with you on that, that one. one. That was good. I know this is awkward for you. She's a colleague you know, of yours. Just, I, <laughs> this is fun. I'm enjoying this. You enjoy this. I can't you see you behaving. You these moments, don't you? <laughs> you want some thumbnails or something? Like that? Yeah. <laughs> little thumb screw thing. All right. Um, uh, well, well, do you have any thoughts at all, James? That is an awkward question to ask well, you, but, you know, she has behaved inappropriately by by allegation not by proof it's kind of hard to say what should happen but it sounds like at the very least push her out of the parliamentary well, secretary gig for a while I, I'd say a few things I mean I you know the Prime Minister told us all his caucus members and he said there will be open and fair nomination races so you know we as members of parliament we better do our work and our writing we should have been doing our work all along ever since being elected but he said you will have open nomination obviously in this case uh, it was not being open and fair and so I think you know there was some decisive action taken with respect to Dimitri the I haven't seen the letter that the president has written but I understand it has some serious points in the letter and, and the National Council which is our governing council of the party is obviously going to look at it further um, you look at other folks like Guy Journal who is straight and narrow as they come yeah, is, in yeah. terms of dealing with this situation so with respect to the parliamentary secretary role, obviously that's up to the prime minister in terms of whether to maintain her in that position or not. But, you know, we are, nominations are very challenging. They're probably the most challenging things you can face internally in a political party. You need to get them right and you need to ensure that, you know, they are fair and open and people who are challenged, look, I may be challenged in my own right. That's democracy. If I can't win, I don't deserve to be. You could be challenged. You're running for the PC leader of Alberta and he's going to help you, right? <laughs> All right, never mind. I won't deal with that one. We dealt with that last week. Um, but, you know, there are nomination challenges. You point out it's a very difficult one. And, and the NDP's got one that could have been a more problematic. They've got a candidate in Toronto uh, who has a long history of opposition to oil science. And they've got a candidate in Fort McMurray, both which have by-elections coming up, by the way. She drives, Lori McDaniel drives one of those heavy haulers for Suncor and says the oil sands should be pumping more money into her riding. I mean, that does present a policy problem for the NDP, does it, or doesn't it? Well, I don't think it does if you break it down to the fact that these are two different people who have come forward and said, we want on board. We like what the NDP is saying. Uh, if you talk to Laurie McDaniels, she has got no problems with the fact that we need to look at oil sands through a more sustainable lens. We need to consider environmental regulations. She really likes her job. And she would like to have that job 10, 20 years from now. And part of looking at the oil sands approach sustainably means that those jobs can be around for a long time versus the you know rip and ship as quick as you can. After five years, everybody's out of work because we haven't thought about this in a, in a strategic way. So I think it's 
it's it's kind of interesting that we have somebody in downtown Toronto and somebody in Fort McMurray who are both coming forward talking about oil sands like this. That could this. be a problem for the uh, Liberals as well, isn't it? Like you're going to policy differences based on regions. How do you the, reconcile these? These are those? pretty. Uh, th these are d at different ends of the spectrum, though. This guy out of Toronto, like he's Joe he, Cressy, is a yeah, former Joe power play, he, He's uh, pretty regular. much lit it up, uh, you know, from from this end of the spectrum, saying that it's it's dirty oil. It's got no place in the Canadian economy. That it, you know, we're, we're a tar nation. So you know, he's lit it up like that. Uh, the McDaniel gal, and I, I believe she may even have Cape Breton roots. Uh, you know. She, the, the, the NDP don't get it about uh, uh, about the, what's going on in Fort McMurray. Heaven forbid, you know, that uh, uh, we have a little bit of affluence in this country because of, of the mining sector, and that's what they're doing, they're mining. They've poured millions and millions into the science on it. Maybe what we should be doing is making sure that the, the pipeline is, is approved so that we can get what that oil is worth. Okay, do you want to weigh in? You should be running for Premier I was going to say. That's a message, Roger. That's a, that's a hey, Breton there. alone would probably carry him <laughs> into the well, job. carry the northern part for you. We, I, we, listen, uh, you know, eastern Nova Scotia, well, not just eastern Nova Scotia and Cape Breton, but uh, provinces, uh, you, you know, the, the, the construction workers, tradespeople in this country, they have benefited greatly from what's going on in, uh, in Alberta and Saskatchewan. I didn't think they were going to have much of an opinion here, but go ahead. <laughs> well, I know, but I think it is a problem for the NDP. I mean, their, their candidate in Edmonton Centre, uh, Mr. Cardinal, who's a very strong candidate. I mean, everybody recognized that right. across the political spectrum. My understanding is he was as well saying that Leo Tom will care stop using tar sands pejorative terms. I don't see how you, they square the policy circle because if you look at Mulcair's pieces and I think policy options, I mean he basically said the economic growth of the oil sands is harmful to the Canadian economy, particularly the manufacturing sector. I don't know how you square that message with a message that a worker in Fort McMurray is saying with respect to the benefits to their own economic well-being, the economic well-being of the country. And as Roger pointed out, I mean, we are developing in a sustainable way. The benefits that the oil sands bring in terms of revenues that fund schools and hospitals across this country is immense. And so let's look at developing as a sustainable way as possible. But frankly, I compare how we develop our industry does in this country with any other industry in any other country across the world. We, do, we compare very well, frankly. I want to move ahead to, I was going to skip, I'll skip over one topic and go to our last one. Uh, we have uh, Pierre Polyev, the Minister of State for Democratic Reform, coming up uh, in the next segment. Uh, there is talk that the, the Conservatives are going to amend this Fair Elections Act, and there's a huge outcry. I mean, it's, I've never seen such united opposition against it, and so few people supporting something so fundamental as elections law. But, I mean, James, are, are you sensing that this bill does have flaws that need to be amended? I mean, you're usually a pretty rational guy on these things. Do you, does it need a fix? Well, I'm a strong supporter of the bill. I'm a strong supporter in terms of you know, I think the minister is the minister. I suppose it's reasonable to expect people to show one of 30 plus forms of ID in order to vote. But the minister is following the committee hearings uh, very carefully. He's engaging with a lot of caucus members. He's looking forward to the amendments being presented, debated at committee. That's the legislative process. I think they should go through that. Um, there are a lot of people who are proposing amendments to it. They should, in fact, do that, see whether the committee does it. And I think the minister is looking at it very carefully, reviewing what they see very carefully. And can he say, I think he's saying, you know, can I accomplish this objective through another means? And so I, I found him actually very engaging and very willing to listen to any concerns that I've raised from people in my writing on the bill. Yeah, engaging. Well, we'll have to see that side of him after the break, next break. Uh, Megan, what, you asked a question in the House of Commons. Didn't sound like you got much of a different answer. Yeah. I, I'm, I don't agree with James. I don't like the bill. But I'm actually going to talk about something different here, and that is the idea that there might be amendments coming. It shouldn't be news that government would accept amendments, but it is. And because that's not been the case for the past many, you know, since they've gotten a majority, they don't accept amendments. They don't accept that they might be wrong. They don't accept that there might be something better. So I think if there are amendments coming or that will be accepted, that's fantastic. That's the way Parliament should work. I do think the bill is so deeply flawed we need to start over, but at the very least the fact that we could sit down and talk reasonably like adults and accept amendments, it's almost like a turning point for Parliament in this majority government. Uh, so I hope that they're true to their hinting, <laughs> I'd say word, <laughs> true to their hinting. Can it be saved or does it have to be trashed and started from scratch, Roger Kuzner? You know, if there's ten things in it, there are probably six or seven that are worthwhile, but then there are three or four that are just egregious. And, and, and when you get the best and the brightest and the most credible voices in this country 
uh, standing together saying, no, this can't happen, this hurts the process, this further suppresses the vote, this disengages, disenfranchises a, a large number of Canadians. You know, when, when you take that credible expert evidence, uh, I know the Conservatives like to take that anecdotal ever, e evidence and base their, their uh, legislation on that, and, and some of which is presented in the House of Commons and later retracted in the House of Commons. To be fair, he always read from the report. The minister always read from the report. I'm not talking about the minister. You know, some of the interventions that have been presented in the House that uh, had to be retracted after Elections Canada wanted to pursue them. So I'll go with the experts and I'll think they should deep six. Vouching. Mm -hmm. Keep it or go? Keep it. Keep vouching? Absolutely. But can't, can't, how come provinces are pulling down vouching? Like Ontario doesn't have it. Why don't I just use the voter ID card as your identification of the ballot? Vouching box? is incredibly important in very particular communities, in particular students, uh, low income individuals, in particular home, people who are homeless, and also people in First Nations communities. Uh, vouching is incredibly important. And the very fact that, you know, 150, 200,000 vote with vouching says we should keep it. Roger. Okay, Brett, we pretty much all know each other anyway down there, so it's, uh, who's, your, who's your father, you know, so it's, uh, you know, it's, uh, but it's uh, very common to uh, talk to a couple of my Newfoundland colleagues and uh, they say, you know, without it, it's, uh, there's a lot of people that just don't, uh, just don't get it. But I, you know, I mean, these are my colleagues and friends, but, you know, when I go back to the riding and I'll ask people who are, who are not sort of you know, engage in politics on a daily basis, and I'll say, do you think it's reasonable that a person present one form of over 30 forms of ID in order to vote? Every single one of them has said, absolutely. You mean you don't have to do that now? Like, to, to, I think if you actually did a poll across the country and said, if we make it not so that you have to present two forms of picture ID, but present one form of these ID, or even add more ID, but that is, it's reasonable to say that, you know, I'm James Rajan, I live in this riding, and I vote here. I, it's, but it's, listen, and, it's and the younger like people, people okay, though, okay, time, guys, it's the younger people, really, that we <laughs> want to get, get going. And, and you know, it, it's sort of dealing with something current, I guess, but uh, if we want to do something progressive, why didn't we look at uh, online voting? Okay. I, you know, if Let's you want see. to have a progressive stop bill. It. I'm getting to it. All right, coming. <laughs> you guys can't stop. All right.